event is uh, the theme of today's event is role of NGS in HPV STI detection, genotyping, and quantifications. This webinar is being co-organized by Primus Life Sciences and My Biome Therapeutics. As you all know, HPV is a group of viruses that is common throughout the world. It is one of the causative agents in sexually transmitted infections in men and women with and without clinical lesions. The main burden of HPV-related disease is due to cervical cancer, and based on Indian studies, about 5% of women in general populations are found to carry a cervical HPV-16-18 infections at a given time, and approximately 82% of invasive cervical cancer show the presence of HPV-16 or 18. There are multiple methods available for HPV and STI screenings. The emerging one is uh, through NGS, which has an edge to existing screening methods, mainly for efficient and improved course of treatment for patients, drug resistance, transmission management, and healthcare cost efficiency. To talk more on these aspects related to NGS-based screenings and management, we have a couple of speakers in today's webinar. And to begin with, I would like to introduce Dr. Babek uh, Grajider, who is a co-founder and chief scientific uh, officer at uh, Chapter DX. He has many years of experience working with technology and essay development at Stanford University. He's one of the pioneers and co-developers of pyrosequencing technology. And he's one of the early scientists who, to work with NGS technologies and apply NGS for many research and clinical applications. He invented a patented multiplex sequencing essay for detection of many H, uh, HPVs and STIs in one single essay. And uh, to talk about his company, Chapter DX in USA is an essay development company with a group of enthusiastic scientists affiliated with Stanford University. And the company's focus is uh, currently on infectious disease, diseases and cancers. So with these words, I would like to call upon Dr. Babak to commence his talk. And today he'll be talking about the uh, Chapter DX Comprehensive HPV STI NGS essay for detection of 29 HPV types and 14 non HPV sexually transmitted infections. So, over to you, Dr. Babak. Uh, thank you, Atush, Ashutosh, for the kind presentation. Thank you. Um, oh, I need access to share the presentation, please. Okay. Juhi, can you help? Yeah, I just did, yeah. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Baba Gary Zade, and I am the Chief Technology, uh, Chief Scientific Officer at uh, Chapter Diagnostics. So I will start first with the global incidence of sexually transmitted infections. Um, as you as you know, the um, um, number of people on the planet infected with sexually transmitted infections is 1.1 billion people, which is mind boggling. Actually, it's almost one out of seven. And, um, and according to WHO, um, we have uh, 400 million, about 376, around 400 million new cases of these four infections, syphilis, gonorrhea, chlamydia, and trachoma. Trichomonas uh, vaginalis. And um, in the United States itself, we have 20 million new cases every year, and we have 110 million existing infections. And actually, in the United States, sexually transmitted infections are increasing. And um, we have 530 million genital herpes, um, 290 million HPV, and um, each year we have 661,000 congenital syphilis in, in babies, and which, which actually results in 200,000 stillbirths or newborn death. So um, as you can see, the, the sexually transmitted infections are, are very common and it's not an one isolated problem. It's usually um, uh, a multiplex of infections. Many we, we see in our studies that many patients, many individuals carry more than one infection. Um, so uh, as I mentioned, the co-infections are very common and um, usually in itself, HPV by itself does not um, inflammate the, the um, cervix 
So it's not inflammatory actually. And um, non-HPV STDs like chlamydia, gonorrhea, HSV2, uh, they, there are lots of publications that they show that these non-HPV STDs, they play a role as a cofactor in HPV mediated cervical carcinomas. And there are many studies showing that chlamydia or HSV, they actually um, contribute to development of cervical cancer. And um, also Neisseria gonorrhea, uh, Trichomonas vaginalis, Gardnerella vaginalis, they are, they, they, they are all, there is lots of studies showing that these, these um, contribute with HPV. Uh, to development of cervical cancer. And HSV2 also increases the frequency of HPV16 integration. And also there are many studies um, uh, showing that um, someone that is infected with HSV2, um, they are prone to acquire uh, HIV threefold higher than the individuals without HSV2. So 300% higher risk of acquiring HIV. And also um, in um, uh, women that have cervical lesions, um, uh, studies shows that they, they show that there is higher um, le level or load of the urea plasma parvimus also. By, by this slide, I just wanna show that um, it's, uh, sexually transmitted infections, they should not be seen as an isolated problem and the, the uh, sexually transmitted infections are common and they, uh, they may give synergy to each other for develop, development of disease and cancer. And um, PAP test is being replaced by primary HPV testing. Right now, many countries have switched right to um, HPV screening instead of using PAP test as a first line. And um, uh, the reason that they are switching to HPV screening is because it's more sensitive. Uh, det detection is earlier, there is earlier detection. Um, there is a greater protection from a negative HPV test for a longer period of time. And also it's a very objective test. Um, um, usually um, PAP tests are observed by the cytologists or pathologists and it, it is a very subjective test and the results could differ. And um, an HPV test is, is um, very objective. So I've been working with HPV for over 20 years and, um, and I've been always thinking, why not develop an assay that can detect everything? And so, and we, 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 based on that, so we developed an assay that, that can detect um, 41 sexually transmitted infections, uh, including HPV, low risk HPV and STI. And, um, and all these are detected in a single tube and single PCR reaction. Uh, of course, not all of these are clinically um, equal. So low risk HPVs, for example, they, they don't cause cancer, they cause genital warts. And um, so for, for clinicians, they might not be as interesting as, as high risk HPV. So, but um, they, they cause genital warts and uh, the advantage of, advantage of this, this panel is that you detect a wide range of sexually transmitted infections. And to best of our knowledge, this is a unique panel. So the, the kit that we have developed, um, it genotypes and quantifies 41 sexually transmitted infections. It's actually 43 targets, but um, uh, 68A and 68B, we differentiate between those and also um, between chlamydia serotypes. Um, so uh, 43 targets, but it's 41 STIs. Um, it's a single tube and single PCR reaction. Um, we have uh, developed an innovative barcoding index system and uh, which makes the assay very cost efficient. And um, 
the technology that we have developed has the most imaginable user-friendly workflow and it's very easy to automate. Actually, this is the most imaginable user-friendly workflow in NGS. I will show you in a slide, so you will see for yourself. And um, it's also suitable for low, medium, and high throughput scales. And um, the kit includes indexing, library preparation, and data analysis software. So this is how it's performed. So this is a microplate and um, the primers and uh, for the HPV and sexually transmitted infections, plus the dual index barcode primers are separate and uh, the internal control primers plus PCR components, they're all in one well. So everything is performed here. So basically barcoding takes place at the same time the targets are being amplified. So um, in, in the same step, PCR amplification, um, uh, we, we also barcode the targets. And this is the workflow. As you can see here, um, first we uh, perform the DNA extraction, which is universal. Depending on the technology that you use, it takes about one to two hours. <clears throat> then it's the PCR also, it's universal and takes about two hours. And then once the PCR is performed, because all the samples uh, in the microplate, they have a barcode and so we can pull them in one tube. And from here, once they are pulled in one tube, um, it's a standard Illumina procedure, it's a cleanup, and then we go sequencing. And the sequencing is overnight, 17 hours. So, so basically the workflow is about five hours, um, and um, including the incubation times. And um, the other thing is um, that, um, uh, the, the, um, the, once you pull the samples, um, it doesn't matter if you have 100 samples or 500 samples, you can pull all of them uh, in the same tube and then we, we go sequencing. And the data analysis part is about uh, 10 minutes on a, on a, um, a good server, you did not, nothing very advanced. Um, and it's about 30 minutes on a, on a laptop computer. So it's data analysis very fast and the software is very user-friendly as well. So the total workflow is about 24 hours of which only five hours is lab or bench work. And the pipetting, uh, we use a multi-pipet, um, multi-channel pipet. And um, it's about 30, 30 pipetting per, per plate, including everything, adding everything there. So it's a very straightforward and fast. And as you can see, the workflow is very easy. And also it's very easy to automate. Um, this is an ex external analytical performance for the assay. This is from Sweden. Um, these are from the WHO samples that we received. And uh, as you can see, for 200 copies, we not only detect single and multiple infections all correctly, uh, we also get the um, 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 the copy numbers around 200 copies. Of course, at these low copy numbers, it's very difficult to get them exactly at around 200. There's, there are always variations, but as you can see, they, they look very good. And, and so uh, it's also a very good assay for quantification. And also it's very unique that you can quantify 41 targets in one well, actually. And the detection limit is 20 copies. And also uh, we have done many studies and one of them is with Roche uh, Cobas, which is FDA approved. And uh, we received these samples from a national lab and uh, this is a blind test. And um, so we didn't know the, the, the HPV genotypes. And as you can see here um, in this rectangular, Roche only detects 14 HPVs of which two are genotype 16 and 18, the rest are reported as plus or minus. And uh, the, we won't be getting any genotypes for these. But uh, the chapter DX assay detects all of these. And um, uh, we had about um, 300 samples. And um, if you look at the results for HPV 16, we had 98.5% agreement, which is excellent. And for HPV 18, we had also 
same number, 98.5%. And for other HPVs, we had 96%. So overall, or the overall agreement was 97.5%, which is very good. And we also detected all the precancers, SIN2 and SIN3, um, uh, that, that had HPV in them. So we detected all, and also the cervical cancers as well that were infected with HPV. But uh, what was very interesting about this study is that we also um, detected uh, the um, chlamydia. The, these, these actually go undiagnosed. We detected um, uh, four chlamydias in this sample group, trichomonas vaginalis, um, mycoplasma genitalium, uh, HSV2, and so on. So as you can see, um, samples that we, we screened for, for HPV, they, they, may, uh, they may have other sexually transmitted infections that they, they, they go undetected. And these are actually symptom-free infections. Um, just to compare the results with Roche, as you can see here, Roche um, only reports HPV 16 and 18 and others. The others are 12 types. And um, for the first sample, um, HPV 16 and others by Roche, but we have detected HPV 16, 35, Trichomonas vaginalis, which is um, uh, a pathogen actually, an STI, and ureoplasma parvum and ureoplasma hominis. These two are common cells. You can find them also in, in healthy individuals. They should be looked at in clinical context. So Roche's others, and um, here uh, with our assay is HPV 33, 56, Trichomonas vaginalis, mycoplasma hominis. And um, uh, here is Roche 16, 18, and others in this patient. And, we have actually detected 12 types here, including 1618. And um, we also detected trichomonas vaginalis and mycoplasma hominis. So as you can see, there are many, um, many of the samples that we detected, they had multiple HPV infections or um, uh, they had other STIs like chlamydia trachomatis here, um, which is HPV 58 and chlamydia and Roche is only others, so, and so on. Um, let me go back again to this slide. So this patient, because this was a blind study and I didn't have the, the results. So this patient has higher uh, um, viral load um, than, than the other samples. So I could tell that with the number of infections and the higher viral load, because the um, sequence trees actually show the, the, um, the viral load, uh, that's, that's the, the very good indicator. So I, I could tell that there might be something, um, uh, something very serious and wrong with this patient. So it could be precancer or cancer. So when we got the results, actually, these were these are the viral loads actually here. And so when we got the results actually uh, from the national lab, so this sample was um, HCL and SYN3, which is a precancer actually. And nowadays, uh, there are a lot of talks that extended genotyping is very important. And um, so not all the types are uh, equally oncogenic. So HPV 16, 18, 31, 33, 35, 45, 51, 52, and 58, they have higher positive predictive value than the 39, 56, 59, and 68. So genotyping is important and um, and, uh, and, and also uh, there, there are new assays that are being getting F, FDA, uh, the FDA approval now. There's one assay actually that, that um, they, they do more genotyping than Roche. We also compared um, the um, uh, Chapter DX kit with Genomica Clard which is a microarray, um, uh, microarray technology, and it's a CIVD assay. And, um, the and these samples that we, we uh, compared with Chapter DX and Genomica Clark, they were positive previously in Kaijin Hybrid Capture 2. Kaijin Hybrid Capture 2 is an FDA approved test. So 
in this study, oh, excuse me. In this study, uh, as you can see, overall agreement with, um, with uh, the genomic Clark was 98.7%. And um, full agreement was 92%. And partial agreement, with partial agreement, I mean, um, uh, they may detect one type and we may detect that type and one more. So that's what I mean um, with partial agreement. So in multiple, basically in multiple infections, we detect more infections actually, but we had 6.7%. So overall agreement is 98.7%. And we had one sample that was in disagreement. It was high risk, we both detected high risk, but we have the sequence results. So, and uh, so one sample was, um, was disagreement, but uh, clinically it didn't matter because it was a high risk. So the patient would receive the same treatment. What was also very interesting here, we also detected samples that had other sexually transmitted infections, such as chlamydia, trachomatis, trichomonas, vaginalis, mycoplasma, hominis, and ureoplasma, parvin. And um, what was very interesting about this study with, with um, uh, the uh, genomica clart is that um, we detected uh, with chapter DX, we detected 25.3% more high risk HPVs, which is actually a lot. And 9.3% uh, low, low risk HPVs, we detected 9.3% more. And also a combination uh, co infections of low risk and high risk together, it was 8%. So, so if you think about it, um, we detected um, eight plus 25, so the 30, over 33% um, more high risk HPVs with our assay. And um, I can show you here some of the examples and these are cherry picked of course. And uh, if you look at the first one is HPV 62. It, this, this sample has been positive with hybrid capture two, which is an FDA approved test. It was positive with genomica CLAR 62. By chapter DX method, it was HPV 30, 45, which is a high risk. 62, is, it's not a high risk. And mycoplasma hominis. And we confirmed this assay that if there is 45 there and with a real time PCR, NLM PCR, which is a CIVD kit, and it was HPV 45, it was confirmed. It only detects 14 types. And genomica CLART detects 35 types. So as you can see here, we not, on, not only detected the low risks, but the, the high risk here that was missed by, by genomica CLART. Um, um, we also got some samples that were challenging, like PCR inhibited by genomica CLART. So it was positive in H hybrid capture too, but uh, there was PCR inhibition here and, um, and as you can see, we detected HPV 51, um, chlamydia, chlamydia trachomatis and Neisseria gonorrhea. This is a serious case actually. So it has high risk HPV, chlamydia and gonorrhea. And as you can see here, it was confirmed that this is, this is HPV 51 by real-time PCR. And um, here again, there are three types and we have detected more types here. Um, we have detected the same types, but plus more, 87 as well, plus chlamydia and uh, mycoplasma hominis. Uh, we are, here we have detected more types and, and so on. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, here it was false negative. Um, we detected HPV6, 45, mycoplasma hominis. 45 was confirmed by 14 types. This assay doesn't detect the low risk types and just the high risk types. And here also there is false negative. These are cherry picked, as I mentioned. Um, we detected HPV 56, HPV 68B. We differentiate between A and B and mycoplasma hominis. And it was confirmed as HPV 56 and HPV 68. So, and so um, the reason that we detect more genotypes is because we are using type specific primers. Uh, such assays, they use general primers or, and for consensus regions, and they, they have biases. So the bias is when there is uh, not many um, uh, copies of a certain type. For example, if uh, here, type 18, there were not many copies. 
And um, so they cannot detect them because these primers, they don't have um, affinity, same affinity for, for all the types or the targets. So some are, are amplified better than the others. And that's one reason. The other one is the competition for these targets. So that's why we detect more types actually. So that's the reason. And um, so um, the chapter DX um, advantages in one tube and one PCR, we detect 41 targets, uh, STI targets. But if you wanna use the commercial assays that are out there, um, many of them just, you have to acquire them separately like HPV screening. And if uh, usually it's screening for 16 and 18 or just a screening, and, and then you if it's positive, you have to use a different kit for genotyping. And then um, there is um, a separate kit for chlamydia and gonorrhea. There is another kit separate for HSV1 and HSV2, another kit separate for trichomonas vaginalis and mycoplasma genitalium. And uh, you have to use uh, many, many different kits and it's very expensive and, and time consuming which all can be done in one tube actually and detect a lot more. And uh, the kit, uh, the Chapter DX HPV SCI kit uh, requires minimal uh, uh, and affordable laboratory equipments. Basically um, the main instruments are a PCR instrument and, and a sequencer. And the sequencers, the Illumina sequencers, they are very affordable now. Um, some of them are in par with a real-time PCR instrument, the cost. And um, also the consumables that are used, um, they're uh, very cost efficient and affordable. And the assay in itself is very cost efficient. Um, the assay is suitable for manual and automated laboratory settings. And also the uh, data analysis software is very user-friendly and it comes with the kit. And uh, the kit includes, as I mentioned earlier, indexing. So there is no need to buy indexing from Illumina library preparation and data analysis software is included. So basically you don't need to, to acquire any other reagents, that everything is there, just um, DNA extraction is separate and also the consumables like the PCR tubes or PCR plates. So this is the last slide. So we have developed and we have the, the kit that we have developed is a single tube uh, and single PCR um, assay, which is unique in, the, in, 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 in uh, next generation sequencing, um, that everything is done in, in one tube. And you cover a wider spectrum of uh, sexually transmitted infections, which is unique as well. Um, it's quantitative, it's type specific. So there are specific primers for each type. Um, also each sample has an internal control and it's suitable for low to high throughput scales. It's very cost efficient and um, you need uh, five hours um, bench work and incubation time uh, for, for 400 samples, 500 samples. And um, the, the workflow also is the most um, simple, uh, the, the, yeah, the most um, simple for, for, for NGS, actually, there is no other assay that we know that is so simple. And uh, it's very easy to automate as well. So uh, thank you. And uh, I'll be taking questions after Amrita's talk. Thank you, Babak. Um, we'll be taking, I do see some questions in the chat box and also in Q&A. Uh, oh, but we'll shall I it. answer them now? or uh, uh, I, We will yeah. take it later after Amrita's talk. Okay, sure. So uh, one thing I really liked about this uh, solution is like high resolution 41 strain, uh, I mean, 41 strains uh, genotyping in single tube PCR and with uh, detection by NGS. So we'll move on to the next speaker. We'll come back to the question answers uh, later towards the end of our sessions. Um, so uh, to introduce our second speaker for today, we have a, a Amrita Rao from MyBiome uh, My Therapeutics, and she is a scientist in clinical genomics at MyBiome Therapeutics, a genomic startup in Mumbai. She has a total of 10 years of experience, both in industry and diagnostics. 
She has extensive experience working in clinical exam, non-invasive perinatal testing, which is NIPT, cancer, mitochondrial sequencing, MLPA, and many other uh, disorders. With her expertise, she has uh, designed in-house NGS products like TB Drug Seek for drug resistance mapping of tuberculosis and uh, covariant Seek and Implicon based panels to detect variants of SARS CoV 2 along with various NGS based cancer panels. She has also developed an NGS screening methods for HPV STI detections using Chapter DS kit here in India. They, I mean, my biome and she are the early adopters of this HPV STI sequencing kit here in Indian market. And uh, I mean, she has one patent file and three publications to her credit. And uh, for today, she will be talking about NGS applications in uh, HPV and sexually transmitted infection det detections. So Amrita, over to you. We'd like to hear your experience and how, what do you think about uh, uh, HPV and STI genotyping through your talk. So over to you, Amrita. Sure. Thank you, Dr. Ashutosh, for the brief introduction. And as Dr. Babak has already mentioned about their work in Chapter DX, so today I'll be speaking on the topic of next generation sequencing applications in human papilloma virus and detection of sexually transmitted infections. So today I'll be giving you an overview of what we are doing in MyBiome, as well as the HPV work that is carried out in MyBiome. MyBiome Therapeutics is a fully equipped advanced science and deep tech startup, which is located in the center of Mumbai, specializing in genome sequencing, diagnostics, bioinformatics research, and services. It is backed up by the promoters of Excel Group, a chemical industry with a vintage of more than 75 years. So we set up this lab in 2020 with the state-of-art genomics and diagnostic infrastructure having Illumina and Oxford Nanocore NGS platforms, real-time PCR, and advanced computation and bioinformatics. So in a very short span of time, especially in the midst of COVID, the company is able to generate over one and a half trillion bases of genomic data, processed over 1,000 genome samples, and delivered over 50 research projects for clients uh, in both reputed government and private organization. We have a team of 15 and plus experts in various fields of molecular biology, computational biology, NGIS, microbiology, software business. So this is our team. Our co-founders are Mr. Ravi Shroff and Dr. Gautam Das. Dr. Nandini Dasgupta is heading the science team. So we have a diverse team of scientists, uh, software engineers, finance, sales, and business professionals, and multiple interns and freelance engineers and scientists currently working with us. So our core area of research are in three different domains. Uh, first is infectious diseases, custom disease panels, and microbiome. So under infectious diseases, we provide services for bacterial, fungal, virus diseases like COVID and HPV. So as we all know that antimicrobial resistance has been a very major concern. So we have validated a drug resistance prediction using whole genome sequencing uh, of TB isolates. And we are also in the process of validating a targeted Amplicon panel for the same. So under hospital biome, the surveillance of hospital acquired infections using NGS has been a concept. And uh, we are in the process of validating uh, in collaboration with different hospitals. So coming to the custom disease panels uh, under cancer biome, we have targeted panels for solid cancer, as well as lung cancer, a clinical exome and HPV, which I'll be talking today. So under reproductive healthcare, uh, we soon will be offering services uh, that is NIPT, non-invasive prenatal testing using NGS-based solutions to detect any inherited uh, genetic disorders and rare diseases, we do offer exome sequencing. As we all know, for uh, organ transplantation, uh, HLA typing is a very critical parameter 
So we have H, uh, NGS based solutions for HLA typing, which provide a very high resolution of HLA alleles. Coming to the last section, that is microbiome, we have done a lot of projects on gut microbiome, vaginal, oral, and skin. So our sister company, that is Microbiome Research, has developed a product uh, that is MIGQ, which measures the individual's gut health index. And according to the score, uh, the food and the probiotics have been recommended. And we have many more in the pipeline using Indian genome-specific information. So in a year's time, we have many research achievements. Uh, two patents have been published, one manuscript published. We have two book chapters and a list of preprints on COVID. So we uh, cater to clinical as well as research services. Clinical services like uh, we offer inf for infectious diseases, cancer, genetic disorders, HLA typing, which I've already mentioned in the core area of research. Apart from clinical services, we also do cater to research services that is DNA-based, uh, whole genome sequencing, bovine parentage panel, RNA-based uh, whole transcriptome sequencing, circular RNA, small RNA sequencing, metagenomics, uh, that is shotgun metagenomics, 16, uh, 16S, 18S, fungal ITS sequencing, epigenetics, uh, bisulfide sequencing, uh, chip sequencing, and high-end computational services. We also cater to clinicians, diagnostics, hospitals, academic research, pharma companies, and government organizations. So we all, as we all know, that January is the month of cervical cancer awareness, and HPV is the major cause for cervical cancer. So today I'll be focusing on HPV. So we have, it's been observed that around 6.6% of the adult Indian population have been diagnosed with sexually transmitted infections. The human papilloma virus is the most common sexually transmitted infection in India, which plays a major role in uh, causing cervical cancer. The cervical cancer is the second most common cancer in Indian women. So according to the uh, latest Indian stats, we have seen that around 1,23,000 women uh, are, di are diagnosed with cervical cancer every year, out of which 77,000 women die from the disease. I mean, these figures are very alarming and needs to be addressed. So what are the risk factors? The risk factors include giving birth to many children, many sexual partners, sexual exposure early in life, unprotected sex, having other STIs, smoking. So what are the symptoms? The most common symptoms are genital warts, rashes, itching in the genital area, unusual vaginal bleeding, and pelvic pain. Most common testing and screening methods is the pap smear test, along with the HPV test to detect the uh, uh, HPV strains. Diagnosis can be done by biopsy and colposcopic examination. The various treatment modes are the first is cryosurgery, loop electrosurgical or excision procedure, electrocautery, laser therapy, and uh, application of creams. So the prevention, there are two uh, uh, vaccines that are currently approved in India. That is Gerdasil, uh, that is quadrivalent, which is effective against four strains of HPV, uh, that is 16, 18, 6, and 11 and Cervarex bivalent, which is effective against two strains uh, of HPV 16 and 18. HPV strains 16 and 18 contribute to about 80% of cervical cancer. So we have, as we have seen that PCR-based tests uh, are the most commonly used uh, for HPV genotyping. However, a very uh, powerful and highly sensitive tool could be implemented detect multiple HPV and STI types. And NGS is the answer to this, which soon will be uh, done in MyBiome Therapeutics. Basically, what is next generation sequencing? Uh, it is sequencing of millions of fragments in a massive parallel fashion, which improves the cost as well as the accuracy, as at the same time, it can be very cost effective. So your input DNA could be genomic DNA, cDNA, amplicon, which has been fragmented in many applications. 
Adapters are ligated to these fragments of DNA and being sequenced, and the data generated is analyzed using bi standard bioinformatic tools. So we offer sequencing on two different platforms, that is Illumina, which works on sequencing by synthesis, which generate shorter reads and have a lower error rate. The second one is Oxford Nanopore, which works on the ionic current change when a strand of DNA or RNA passes through the protein nanopore. So this signal is decoded to give a DNA or RNA sequence. Over here, we can actually have, uh, it enables us to see a real-time analysis of the long DNA or RNA fragments. The nanopore is a highly portable. It would generate long reads and a slightly higher error rate. So why NGS in HPV detection? Because it has the ability to sequence many targets simultaneously, higher sequencing depth, which enables very high sensitivity, higher discovery power, higher sample throughput with sample multiplexing, and faster turnaround time for high sample volumes. So here the work at MyBiome was done in collaboration of framers. So as you have uh, seen that Dr. Babak also did mention about the workflow. So this is a very simple workflow where DNA is extracted. It's a one-step PCR where you have a simultaneously amplification with uh, HPV STI specific primers along with indexing. All the samples are pooled and purified and then they're sequenced and data is analyzed. So the entire workflow can be completed in 24 hours. And this is actually very scalable. So we can see that around 1,100 samples can be sequenced in one MySeqRun, and 10,000 samples can be uh, sequenced in NextSeq. So with the automation and the workflow, high throughput is easily achievable. So uh, coming to the work done, uh, so we had an in-house uh, pilot study of uh, 92 Indian samples using the Chapter DX HPV STI kit. So these results were compared with a traditional PCR test, and it was seen that around 92% of concordance was seen for the positive HPV samples. And most interestingly, it was uh, seen that around 36% of the negatives identified by the PCR are positive by the NGS. Uh, this but needs to be clinically correlated, and this shows the sensitivity of NGS technology. So along with the HPV strains, we also detect sexually transmitted infections. The most common ones were urea plasma parvum, urea plasma urelectum, and mycoplasma hominis. So these are commensal uh, infections which are seen in healthy as well as disease. So we need to uh, clinically correlate these with the microbiologist. So what are the future prospects? We have seen the global HPV uh, testing and PAP smear test market size is expected to reach around 6.39 billion by 2028 with the compound annual growth rate of 15.3%. Uh, the Indian market size is uh, expected to reach around 135.3 million by 2027 with the uh, growth rate of 35%. So this clearly shows that there's a lot of scope for NGS. So, I mean, you would be surprised to know that currently only 3.1% of the Indian women are screened for cervical cancer, which is according to the International Agency for Research on Cancer. I mean, this indicates the need uh, for a uh, high throughput mass screening solution, which can be only provided by NGS technology. The mass screening should be encouraged in hospital laboratories, reference laboratories, health insurance players, HPV camps, research organizations, pharma and biotech companies. So as I've spoken about HPV, I would also like to share that we are open for any collaborations or clinical trials, validations, and for any genomics related queries, you can reach out to us at hello at mybiome.com or info at microbiome.in. Thank you. Thank you, Amrita, for your insightful talk. It was really interesting to see all those data and what MyBiome is doing in NGS. Um, um, I mean, it's 
open for questions and we do get some, I mean, how many questions are there? Juhi, can you see that? Okay, so we got a few questions here. Oh, I'll have to end this poll. Let's see. So we have a question by uh, Anjali Rao. Okay. So the question is, can you please explain how barcoding up sample is retained even when the samples are mixed in the next step? Okay, so I can take this question. Yes. Let me share um, this slide again, just a moment. Um, So as you can see here, um, the target HPV um, primers um, are separate from the barcoding index. So we don't have the barcodes on the primers, they're separate and they have um, conserved regions that uh, at the same time that you amplify the target, uh, each target becomes also gets a barcode. So they are separated actually. So they are not, and that makes it a lot uh, cheaper actually that's why the kit is very cost efficient i'll explain why um, imagine we are using about 100 primers in this assay and uh, for 100 primers that we are using in one one tube and if we have for each patient we have the barcode so and then if you have five say 500 patients that you wanted uh, 500 individuals that you want to analyze them so um, so you you basically need to order about uh, 50,000, uh, no, let me see, five, uh, yeah. Um, so about 50,000 primers, you know, for 500 individuals when you wanna analyze them sequencing. But here you just ordered the 100 primers and also the, the um, uh, extra, the, the dual index barcode separately, which the number uh, decreases dramatically and makes the kit very, very cost efficient actually. Okay, so next question. I hope is I have for, answered your question. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so you can ask again. Uh, I mean, it's still open for question and answer session. So next question is for Amrita. Uh, Amrita, like looking at the NGS library prep methods and different technologies available in the market. So what do you think? Like how, how uh, um, no, uh, how expensive it is to prepare a library for HPV um, screening? The lab. So it would uh, almost match to the standard uh, PCR test uh, that are currently available. So it's going to be very cost effective. And as many samples can be multiplexed, so I mean, it will, uh, the cost will uh, drop down very drastically. Okay, so this will answer the question, like also there, are, I see a couple of questions related with the cost. So for those who are asking about pricing and all, we can probably uh, uh, discuss offline and take this to our sales team and they'll share your prices. Uh, the next question is with Babek. So Babek, why extended genotyping matters? How is SPP genotyping from chapter DX different than other solutions providers? Let's say BD or any other providers. Um, so uh, that's a very good question, actually. So um, if you look at it, they only look at a, um, a <laughs> limited number of targets, those, those technologies, and it's based on real-time PCR. And um, the kit that we have developed uh, type specifically amplifies uh, 41 or 43 targets, but 41 STI and HPVs. And so it's very cost efficient and you get a sort of um, better overview of what's going on. And, and, and as our, our data shows, many patients are, are infected. When you look at HPV, many patients are infected with other sexually transmitted infections. So you get all those results. And um, the kit, the it's the the price is very very competitive with um, limited uh, range real time PCR assays as well. So it's very competitive with those prices. So you for the same cost, you would get a lot more data and it's um, more helpful for the patient. And also the BD has got uh, FDA approval for uh, standard genotyping, right? Not the full genotype. Uh, they don't do full genotyping of the right. 14 types. They, they they just do a few genotypes. I don't remember all of them, mm -hmm. but um, a few, they, they do more than Roche. They do a few more than Roche, yeah. Okay. And then, uh, oh, another quick, uh, another uh, important thing is 
uh, for BD, you have to use um, four wells. I, if I remember correctly, four wells. Mm -hmm. And that makes it also the, the um, uh, scaling sample, if you want to scale for So on a plate, mm -hmm. you can run 25 or 30 samples, you know, and you cannot do 96 samples. So then uh, if you have large number of samples, <laughs> that's a limitation as well. Correct. So uh, uh, I have got an, an, an interesting question here as, as immunohistopathology is a uh, gold tech, age old technology. How far do you feel NGS replace it? Um, NGS is replacing a lot of new, um, a, a lot of older conventional technologies because it's, it's, you get a lot more data uh, you have the possibility to, to multiplex and also sequencing is gold standard. So mm -hmm. I, I think eventually um, um, uh, in, in many, lab many laboratories is still are running real-time PCR and PCR and microarrays, but eventually I think uh, NGS will be in a lot of those laboratories. And as we can see, um, more and more laboratories are, are acquiring um, uh, next generation sequencing platforms. So do you uh, foresee Babette, that uh, NGS method is going to, uh, if I can say replace, or maybe you can uh, know, um, uh, be, you will be more useful than PAP testing. I mean, it's going to replace that PAP testing or it can overcompete with that. Well, PAP test is uh, uh, globally is being replaced by, by um, um, real-time PCR or other technologies that are more accurate because the error rate, uh, error rate for PAP test is really high. Mm -hmm. And also not in all areas, you can find um, expert uh, cytologies or expert pathologies as well. And um, it takes years of training and, and it's a very subjective assay. So uh, many, many countries are, are switching to HPV as the first primary screening method. Um, Amrita, there's a question for you. Um, if the NGS pan, uh, the, uh, Dr. Namita, she wants to know if the NGS panel for HPV was uh, compared with real-time PCR or conventional endpoint PCR plus single sequencing, if it was compared with real-time PCR, which method was more sensitive? Uh, I think NGS, I mean, because where we could see the sensitivity where around 36% which were actually detected negative by the PCR test have been detected a positive year. So we are able to see, and they're also not only low risk, uh, we're able to see for the high risk HPV types too. So, mm -hmm. I mean, definitely NGS is very sensitive. Okay. Uh, Babak, what are the barriers for HPV screening globally? I mean, you say like, uh, you know, uh, one thing I could say like sampling is the mm -hmm. one issue. Do you think, uh, uh, any offerings like self-sampling kit or something will get better access to the patient for the test? I, I agree with you that, yeah, I, I think it, it, it would actually, you can reach many patients, many, many women in, in um, desolate areas uh, when, when it's hard to reach them. And, and um, there are so many studies um, I am at HPV conferences, they have done so many, I mean, studies that they have used self, compared self-sampling with, um, um, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the standard uh, procedure that they do, they take, take the samples, patient samples, and the results are in par, they, they, the results are very good. And um, also the good thing with self-sampling is that it, it, they, are, they are very stable at room temperature, so they can be shipped to the labs or um, clinics um, by mail and they, they are stable within one or two weeks. The samples are stable in room temperature. Okay. And uh, the last and final question is, I think for both of you and you can come one by one. So what are the challenges? I mean, looking at the country like India, which is uh, uh, highly populated and some of the regions are very remote uh, to the, uh, uh, I mean, they're not very accessible to the hospitals and other clinics. So. What do you think, like as you, Amrita was mentioning earlier, like only 3% of humans are getting screened for HPV or STIs. So uh, do you think uh, like uh, any important steps, what we should be as a you know, um, provider in the country or maybe scientific community in the country can take some important steps to reach out to maximum number of women in the, uh, for screening and, and uh, you know, kind of uh, motivate them to go for regular screenings? 
for this. And Babak, you can probably tell us through a global, global perspective and Amrita may probably Indian perspective. Um, um, uh, as you mentioned, uh, the self-sampling is one way to go. Direct to consumer is another way to go that um, the patients can go online and, and order the kits and they are shipped to their houses and, and they can do the test um, at home and then send it to the laboratory. Or... And um, uh, sexually transmitted infections are increasing uh, globally. Mm -hmm. And as Amrita showed in slide, you know, the... Um, um, the the number the number of the, the numbers of people that are being going to be screened is increasing actually, and also um, the the uh, India has uh, India has got um, Amrita will talk about this, but India has got the highest number of cervical sank cancers in the world as well. Right. So so I think um, more and more people will be screened in future, and and uh, HPV is not only cervical cancer; it causes also other types of cancer. The head and neck cancer is, is based because of the HPV and it's because of the sexual behavior, uh, penile cancer, you know, and, and anal cancer. Um, in San Francisco, where, where I live, um, the, the, um, uh, in, in the, the uh, homosexual, homosexual communities, the anal cancer is very high and that's because of the, the HPV as well. Correct. Amrita? So I think for injured population, uh, more awareness is required. As I had mentioned in the last slide, that mass screening should be increased in you know various sectors, like uh, especially from diagnostic centers to pharmaceutical companies, your insurance players, where this can be added as a major segment for mass screening. So I mean, everyone does have their health insurance. So I mean, if this can be an important component there too. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's what the self-awareness uh, should be done in uh, your hospitals and your research labs so that more people are aware of this and uh, preventive actions are taken. I mean, at the right time so that you can uh, help in the early diagnosis of uh, cervical cancer. Correct. So hospitals should also be equipped with those, uh, you know, tools and uh, munitions and arms, whatever. Yes, is to I mean, everywhere, things. like where patients would be going, clinics and, you know, uh, camps. I mean, there are a lot of HPV camps that are carried out in India. Mm -hmm. So where uh, people can be made aware of this and, you know, uh, at the same time, we educate them about the carry out the testing. Correct. Great. So uh, I don't see any more questions in the chat box. So with this, uh, I should... Yeah, I should. I, I saw. Uh, apologies for the interruption, but I saw someone had asked the question if small labs can run the NGS assay, and I would. I wanted to answer. Okay. I don't know. I I read it in the. Um, yeah, someone had asked this question. Okay, that's it. And I just question, wanted yes. to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, and and I just wanted to say that the small labs can actually run the assay. Let me show you a slide here, and um, this is the slide that I wanted to show you. And depending on the number of samples and you and the, the instrument that you have in your lab, um, for example, if you have a MySig, um, there are kits that you can use them for up to 50 samples and for 200 samples or 750 samples, depending on what kit you use. So for, for the uh, mini-seq, that, that's what we are using actually, you can use um, for 400 samples or 1,250 samples, depending on the kit that you use. So yes, and the cost of sequencing is very, very affordable and it's, okay. it's not expensive once you um, uh, load uh, the, the, the number of samples here, that would be very, very affordable, yes. Yes, and to add on to that, those small labs who wants to get into HPV screening and they don't have enough sample load, probably they can outsource it to MyBio or Amrita. They can take care of it because they have already launched it officially. Yes. So, I mean, I, I hope they will be happy to receive samples from any sure. country. Yes, so, yeah, most great. welcome. Correct. So, uh, I think with this, uh, this uh, we are at the end of the sessions. I would like to thank Dr. Babak and Amrita for their presentations. I would also like to thank Dr. Gautam Das for all the help and support for planning this event. We as uh, Prima's Life Sciences are looking forward to have you again in the near future for similar events. Please reach out to us with ideas and suggestions. We would like to be part of any such program and love to extend support required from all the sites. Thank you for your presence. Please take care of yourself and have a great day. Bye -bye. Thank you.
Thank you, Dr. Ashutosh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ashutosh. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.